Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome, not to cabaret, but to something equally captivating, namely a morning together with the EU forest-based value chains for a sustainable future. This event contains two seminars. A first one, sponsored by the Would Be Better Network, where we focus on the post-2020 EU forest strategy. And a second seminar, sponsored by CEPI, with a focus on climate and sustainable product policies. My name is Anna Holmberg. I represent the Swedish forest industries, and I have the pleasure of being the moderator today. I extend a welcome to you here in the room at the Renaissance Hotel in Brussels, but also to all of those, all of, those of you who are participating via our live broadcasting. There is more than 360 people who have registered. It's an amazing number, and we are very grateful that you spend your valuable time together with us. So thank you. But before we kick off, I need to go through some information on practicalities and safety measures. So uh, respecting the GDP regulation, I inform that we are broadcasting and that we are also taking pictures in the room. If the fire alarm goes off, it is not a drill, it's an alarm. And we evacuate the room through the doors at the end of the, the room, or there are also doors behind the curtains on either side of the stage. And to be fully compliant with Belgian COVID-19 measures, wearing a mask is mandatory here at the hotel, and it is only when you sit down that you can take it off. And yes, I know, I'm standing up, not wearing a mask, but this has been cleared as long as I stay on this, what is it, two and a half by two and a half meter moderator island that I've been assigned. Um, you can see that we've organized the stage somewhat differently in three islands, and this is to secure safety distance between speakers. And we encourage all of you here to follow the safety measures here at the hotel. Use the hand sanitizer stations, wash your hands, keep a distance. And to those of you on the broadcast, we do hope that you are safe wherever you are. If active on Twitter, please use the hashtag GreenSource, and we will follow the flow on Twitter on this hashtag, and we will pick up on comments and questions when applicable. So, as mentioned, the first seminar today is arranged by the Would Be Better Network. This is a network arranged jointly by the Swedish Forest Industries and the Federation of Swedish Family Forest Owners, or in Swedish LRF Skogsägare. Each network is hosted by one Swedish member of European Parliament, and you see the four hosts here. It is Fredrik Fedele, Jessica Poulfjärd, Erik Bergqvist and Per Holmgren. And the network aims to be an arena where we jointly can discuss relevant policy topics and where we can learn more about the forest-based value chains. And now it's time for a short welcoming address from the Federation of Swedish Family Forest Owners by Mr. Lennart Axel. Thank you very much and very welcome to this event. We are 16 million family forest owners in Europe. And uh, forestry is a very long-term activity. Uh, literally, we are often managing our forest for the next generation. And that is the reason why we are devoted for sustainable forest management. This network is created to perform a, a fora for forestry um, policies, discussions. And what can be more timely than deal with the forest strategy? Um, from forest owners' point of view, the forest strategy should recognize and should support the drivers and the engagement of family forest management for all the benefits it provides. I thank you very much for attending and enjoy this morning. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Leonard. 
Uh, and we would like for you, here in the room and also on the broadcasting, to interact with us today. Nope, you can't just sit there, do nothing. It's all about interaction. And you can do that by getting your device out, your phone, your iPad. You log on to menti.com using the code that you see in front of you. So please log on and you will then see that we've pushed the first question to you. And the question is, we want to know which member state you're in right now. Not your nationality, the member state you're in, because we want to see what kind of a geographical spread we have achieved today. And we will see the results coming through live here as soon as the technology is with us. And the larger a letter or a word stands out, it means the more people that have replied. Things are moving. We seem to have a lot of people in Belgium. I'm not surprised about that. We have a lot of Swedes. But we are a little bit short so far on other nationalities. Finland, thank you, Finland. There you came. Belgium, France, Finland. Well, we have somewhat of a geographical spread. Austria came in, France. Well, we. We know from uh, experience that we had some 50 nationalities registered for the event. Okay, let's push the next question to you using Menti this time as well. And um, this time we would like to know what of these, which one of these categories, you'll see them much better in your device, represents you and your profession. Are you a forest owner? Are you an industry representative? Or do you belong to the EU uh, institutions, or are you a member state representative, for instance? And here the numbers are ticking in at a better rate than the earlier question. That tells me that technology is up and going. There is a very clear majority for the industry representatives. Um, we also have a goose decent crowd for the academic sector, which is nice. I think we'll leave it there by that. Um, instead, we'll move into our first policy discussion of today. And I'll address that by saying a few words uh, as an introductory. So the existing EU forest strategy was published in 2013. It defined two key objectives, and it also addressed uh, so-called linked priority areas. Um, at the end of 2018, a progress report was made and it concluded that significant progress was ongoing and that the strategy was an efficient policy tool. And now, in the first quarter of next year, the Commission has advised that they intend to publish a post-2020 EU forest strategy. So, in other words, this is the reason why we are having this discussion today. It is both highly timely and relevant in the policy landscape. And with that having said, it's time for us to listen to today's host, which is Mrs. Jessica Pulfjard. And I want you on this island, Jessica. <laughs> you are a member of the European Parliament since 2019. You're a member of the Environment Committee. You're also the deputy coordinator for your party group, the Christian Democratic EPP group. Yes. And you've been very involved in the Parliament's position on the forest strategy. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Although uh, many of you are listening from home, it feels good to be here in person and to see and meet other people in the room. It almost feels like normal. <laughs> Actually, yesterday I was looking at a horror movie and... Um, I don't think that the murder was the worst part. It was when two people were approaching each other and reaching out for their hands and were shaking hands. And I felt like, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. So I think we have a possibility to adjust to the new normal quite quickly. Although, of course, much focus is on the COVID-19 and handling the, the COVID-19 crisis, I think it's important that we still can address other issues. And therefore, I'm very pleased that we could have this meeting this morning, and I can't think of a better way to spend a morning but um, talking about forestry and forest strategy. 
for us uh, who are interested in these forest-related issues, I think it's important that we meet up and that we keep the, the uh, discussion going. And uh, this event is organized by the Would Be Better Network. And although, as you could see on the screen, there are Swedish parliamentarians that are hosting these events, I would say that this is an important issue for whole of Europe, and uh, I hope that many of you can participate uh, from other countries and member states uh, in the European Union. And we know that forestry has a huge role to play in the how to lower our emissions, both through a bioeconomy and from uh, the power of absorption. Uh, I think it's uh, useful for uh, the climate uh, discussion to use the forest and to, to see what it can contribute with. Because of this, the network aims to discuss the current issues regarding forestry uh, and exchange of best practices and see how we best can make use of forestry in the meeting our climate goals. And uh, I was responsible for the INI report in Envy on the forest strategy. And uh, it was truly an uh, interesting uh, experience, uh, to say the least. Uh, it is very clear that forest and forestry can stir up a lot of emotions. And uh, I would say that there are many interests, of course, uh, that want to be heard in these matters. But I also think that there is a geographical difference uh, in these matters as well, maybe more than po political uh, groups. And we can see that the vision amongst the political group is quite, uh, and sometimes uh, um, bigger than, than uh, their, their national uh, differences. But uh, let me be clear, uh, we cannot let this uh, coming forest strategy be based on feelings. Uh, we have to uh, see to science and to be science-based. And uh, I also think that we have a um, more important role in the forest than being a carbon sink. And of course, we believe in scientific research and best practices, and we know that is also the tradition that works. And we don't want a new forest strategy to become another biodiversity strategy. I think it's a great value to have an independent uh, forest strategy that stands on its own. And the role of forests, forestry and forest products uh, are increasing due to the demand to lower our emissions and the need to change into circular bioeconomy. Because of the competence issue, there is a great need for coordination and taking a holistic view on how we can best make use of the forests. And I see that Anna is looking on her watch, so I think I, think I better uh, wrap it up. And, I think everything of this uh, has to be addressed in the new forest strategy. And I very much look forward to hearing from Mr. Bescau and Mr. Delgado Rosa in how the commission uh, is going to work on these uh, issues. And uh, I hope that we can all enjoy today's seminar and I'm looking forward to hear from all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you and you will come back at the end to share your takeaways. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jessica. We are now going to listen to three short interventions from knowledgeable speakers. Two of them are here in the room. One is with us on link. And I just got a message in my ear here that he is with us. Uh, the technology is working, so that's excellent. So at this point, I would kindly ask Mr. Umberto Delgado Rosa to make it to this stage. And if you feel you need for it, there is some equipment there to clean for the earlier speaker. And Mr. Pierre Bascou, please, on this side. And make it yourself comfortable, because you're going to be on that island for a while now. <laughs> Excuse me. And at the same time, I am sending some uh, messages through cyberspace to Mr. Petri Sarvama in Finland. Petri, you are uh, a member of European Parliament since 2014. You are a member in the Agricultural Committee, and you are the rapporteur on the Parliament's own initiative report on the forest strategy. Welcome, Petri. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm doing fine. And I wish I was at uh, the, the beautiful Renaissance Hotel 
uh, where you guys are, but, uh, but right now I, I'm so busy that I couldn't even uh, step on a plane because I'm <laughs> already um, preparing myself for the next big uh, effort that I have in the parliament. Anyways, uh, just a little correction. I've been a member of the parliament since 2012. Ah, thank you. With that corrected, um, well, I leave to you, Petri, for your short intervention, and then I will follow that up with a few questions specifically to Petri, because he then has to leave us for another commitment. So the digital floor is yours, Petri. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, and then also uh, thanks to, to Jessica. <clears throat> Jessica Pulfiad, we had excellent cooperation uh, negotiating um, uh, the, the forest uh, strategy own initiative report in the parliament and um, so ladies and gentlemen uh, viewers around Europe and over there in Brussels first of all um, let me thank uh, the would-be better network uh, for the invitation and organizing this event um, uh, I uh, will go straight into business um, forests forestry and the forest based sector have a very crucial role in achieving many of the EU's objectives and especially including uh, the Green Deal and the transition to circular bioeconomy. The European Parliament is uh, indeed forming its position on the new uh, forest strategy and three weeks ago the Parliament's Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development adopted its position with a large majority, 36 to 8, with four abstentions uh, on, on, uh, on this uh, report. The message is very, very clear. The economic, social and ecological sustainability of forests must be taken into consideration in a balanced way. The position of the ENVI, uh, the Environmental Committee and, and ITRE uh, committees were also taken into account in, in the negotiations. The report emphasizes the important role of sustainable forest management multifunctional role of forests and the bioeconomy at a time when forestry is playing already and will be playing uh, even a bigger role in the fight against climate change and in the transition to a fossil free society. <clears throat> the report also recognizes that sustainable forest management promotes the protection of European forest biodiversity. We do need an ambitious and independent EU forest strategy for the post-2020 period. Forests and the forest-based sector offer significant opportunities for the climate, the environment, uh, people and the, the bioeconomy. The role of the new EU forest strategy as an effective coordination tool between the various EU forest-related policies should be promoted, taking into account the whole forest-based value chain. It should also provide coherence and synergies with other sectors affecting the forest sector. The Treaty of the European Union makes no reference to a common EU forest policy and responsibility for forests lies with the member states. But what is decided at EU level in uh, the fields of energy, climate and environmental policy uh, really do affect the use and management of forests. My report states that properly funded and high quality research and innovation are also crucial for the future of EU forests and for the forest-based value chain as a whole. Given the growing demands and the need to meet the wide range of opportunities and challenges the society is facing. In addition, the report stresses the importance of evidence-based decision-making regarding EU policies related to forests. Climate change mitigation should be seen as one of the important services uh, that forests and the forest sector can provide. It is important to emphasize the general climate benefits of forests and the forest-based value chain, such as the promotion of carbon sequestration, the storage of carbon in wood-based products, and the substitution of fossil-based raw materials and energy. Indeed, the report points out the crucial role of wood-based materials in substituting fossil-based alternatives and alternatives with a higher environmental footprint. 
in industries such as construction, textiles, chemicals uh, and packaging, uh, and the need to fully take into account the climate and environmental benefits of this material substitution. In addition, the adaptation to climate change has become increasingly important to ensure appropriate measures to prevent natural disasters. Bark beetle epidemics, droughts and forest fires need to be addressed and prevented. Ladies and gentlemen, forests should not only be seen as carbon sinks. As such an approach would reduce the involvement of other sectors in minimizing emissions. Reducing the dependence on fossil-based raw materials and energy would offer new opportunities, especially in rural areas. The Agri Committee's report has still to be approved by the whole parliament in the plenary vote next week. I really do hope that the parliament will approve this uh, report, which I see as, as truly a balanced report. For instance, I could mention that just the word biodiversity is mentioned 40 times. That's four zero, 40 times in this report. Our aim is to send a strong political message to the Commission in the light of the preparation of the new EU forest strategy. The forest-based sector, the circular bioeconomy and sustainable forest management are the keys in solving the challenges of our time. Thank you. Thank you, Petri. Um, and I'll, as I said before, I'll take the opportunity to fire off some questions to you straight away before you have to take off, while these two gentlemen I will discuss with slightly later. So, um, what was the main stumbling block in the negotiations in the Agri Committee? Where did you fight, to be in a more specific language? Open up a bit on how the discussions went, please. Well, um, first of all, of course, it's, it was three committees involved. So uh, one level uh, was within uh, the main, the lead committee, Agri, um, where I was very, very happy with, with uh, uh, actually the cooperation um, across the board of political groups. It was really uh, uh, from, from one uh, end to the other, we were all seriously uh, involved in, in, in a very cooperative uh, atmosphere and, and not naming any, any political groups uh, uh, especially, but, uh, but it was a very good atmosphere. Um, the Environmental Committee, of course, uh, has, uh, has a, a different uh, angle uh, to the forests and, and they were given uh, a shared competence in three fields. So that was a bit more problematic. Um, but as I said, uh, cooperation with the Envy Rapporteur Madame Poulfiard was uh, was excellent, and and as a result, we ended up uh, uh, including uh, uh, almost, I mean, practically all the main elements of the Envy report. And ITRE, uh, industry uh, technology uh, research, was that was no problem at all. Mm -hmm. So, so, but it was it was long work, and it was exceptionally. Um, very exceptional for an own initiative report. We had several shadows meeting. We also had shadows meeting involving the envy dimension. And uh, we had almost 500 amendments just to the agri report. So uh, it, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a, a tough work. A lot of engagement without any doubt. Um, you spoke about the report stating uh, it, the strategy has to be balanced, it has to encompass all the contributions from forests and forest-based products. It has to respect, so to me it sounds it has to be a strong strategy that the Commission puts forward next year. At the same time you said it must respect member state competence. So do you think, can it be that strong policy document and at the same time fully respect the, the competence discussion? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I don't see a contradiction there at all, because um, the stronger uh, the EU forest strategy 
uh, is, uh, you know, uh, the clearer it makes the coordinating role. Um, and, and you should also uh, uh, note that, uh, that my report um, uh, does, is sort of like, it's outside uh, the competencies that are, that are given to the union in Article 4. So, so the competencies that the union has in, in environmental uh, uh, and, and climate um, and agricultural policies uh, is, is another thing. And, and the, the more uh, the, the EU forest strategy is, is balanced and the stronger it becomes and the more it will be implemented, it will actually uh, sort of like clarify and, and, and keep clear the, the overall uh, situation where uh, the final uh, say in the forest policies is with the member states, but then the member states, of course, uh, have to um, uh, follow the EU legislation in different policy areas. But, but the EU forest strategy really should not be mixed with, uh, uh, with the, uh, the, the policy areas of environment and, and, uh, and agriculture and, and, the, and the climate policies. Well, thank you. And, and you two on stage, you can prepare for the same question. It's coming your way within shortly. Um, just a final question to you, Petri. Um, because there's one part of your, your uh, position where you talk about the need for more research and innovation uh, in forests and, and forest-based products. Could you just say a few words about that? Because when it comes to forestry, you touched a bit on climate change adaptation as well. So, uh, how did the discussions go in the committee on those topics? I think there is a there is general understanding um, within the main political groups that that innovation uh, can really give us a lot of answers to the climate change, and and that um, and that the forests, uh, uh, if used uh, uh, innovatively. Um, can really contribute a lot and and uh, and replace uh, uh, fossil fuel-based materials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, of course, uh, I, I can be as frank as, and say that that there were differences within the political groups in in how much that was emphasized, and 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 there and that was also maybe answering your first question uh, a little bit more in a more clear way. The main difference between the the different viewpoints, and also at the same time, the the Greens and and then you know the centre right, uh, is that where as the Greens are sort of like uh, putting the wheel in in a different way uh, and and prioritise protection of the forests, and then sort of like everything should follow from there because biodiversity should be first and foremost and forest strategy should sort of like be based on the biodiversity strategy. Now this of course is the main, um, the center uh, element of, of, of different views and, and, and heated uh, discussions we had uh, over the course of the negotiations, and, and that, that's no secret. So, so there is a different way of, of prioritizing things, uh, whereas, uh, whereas I see that, that, that if we really take full advantage of what forests can offer us um, and, and have the pyramid of the three aspects, the, the economic, the ecological, and the social, in, in a balance, and balance really means balance. That is like I've been accused that uh, that the report is is uh, is just representing the you know the forestry and uh, and the industry, but uh, that could not be uh, more far from the truth because uh, it, it, you know I it, it would have been uh, absolutely uh, uh, hopeless to to get this report through with such a, a big majority in the committee. Uh, if I had done that, and uh, and innovation, just to sum it up, last is 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 very very central and and a key point if we really want to tackle and and meet the goals of uh, of the climate uh, challenge that we have set for ourselves. Well, thank you, Petri. Um, the vote in plenary is next week. Do you expect the 
a positive outcome on that uh, vote, or where do you think it stands? Well, the only thing I can say is that I've. I didn't stop working for this report when the vote in the Agri Committee was uh, was uh, clear. I I continued um, every day, and and I will continue until you know it ain't over until. And this is a very uh, politically incorrect uh, old proverb, but it ain't over until the fat lady sings. So I'm I'm as, as we speak, I'm I'm preparing myself for for phone conversations and video meetings and also uh, physically in Brussels next week. I will be arriving Monday morning again. Um, I've been going back and forth. Um, so uh, yes, I'm, I'm talking to all key players and I will not stop before we have the result of the vote. Of course, I'm positive that it will be a, a good result. Well, thank you so much for that, Petri, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, I know you have to take off now to negotiate the rule of law, was it? Ah, another oh my important. God. Yes, well, as, as you may know, now it seems that the whole, that everything actually, the budget and the recovery and resilience facility and the 750 billion, and everything is hanging on this nail. <laughs> and I happen to be, uh, <laughs> I happen to have a role in that. So yes, I don't know how we'll be able to survive the rest of this year, but uh, uh, a lot of good, strong coffee. coffee the job. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you, Petri, and we'll say bye-bye to you. Have, a, have an interesting uh, discussion on the rule of law. Important topic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anna. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. And with that, with any further ado, I'll send the initiative over to this island, to you, Pierre. So please share your intervention here. Then we will go to Umberto, and then we will have a bit of a discussion. So okay. please. Okay, thank you very much, Anna, and um, good morning, everybody in Brussels, uh, all over Europe, if understood, uh, if understood well. It's a real pleasure for me to be, uh, to be here, I think, in, uh, in this conference, to be able to talk about such an important topic, I think, the, the future EU forest, uh, forest strategy. And I have to say it's a real pleasure to be in a physical conference after spending months and months talking to a computer in a black screen. At least I see a few people here. And even if others, you know, are in, uh, at home or in their office, you know, all across, uh, all across Europe. So you gave us seven or eight minutes, I think, you know, in a very generous way. So I will try to be brief and I will structure my intervention. A brief intervention around three points. The first one is that I would like to underline, and it was very, very well done, I think, by, uh, already done by Mr. Savama. I would like to underline, I think, the high political and uh, policy attention given to these initiatives, and more generally, I think, to the role of forest in, uh, for our society, for our economy, but also for the environment. As you all know, there is an increasing acknowledgement about the crucial roles that forests play in addressing global challenges, and here I could mention, I think, the Sustainable Development Goal. I could talk about, I think, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and also, and it is important, on the protection of biodiversity. And at EU level, the European Green Deal, Green Deal acknowledges the importance of forests and the forestry sector in putting in place the new growth strategy, which I mean presented in this, uh, in this Green Deal, and for the achievement of its objectives and priorities. And here I would like to refer in particular to climate, climate neutrality by 2050. I would like to refer to the need, I think, to protect biodiversity and also the need to develop the circular bioeconomy, circular bioeconomy, which is so important for the long-term future and the long-term viability of rural areas across, I think, the whole EU. So the importance of this EU forest strategy is also reflected in the recent communication adopted by the Commission, um, communication about, I think, the new European climate ambition by 2030, and forest, it's clear, forest will be crucial for achieving the proposed reduction target of at least 55% uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emission by 2030, as proposed by the Commission. So, and we have heard, I think, this uh, a bit earlier this morning, the other also, the other EU institutions are also very much engaged into this, in the work of the EU forest strategy. We heard that next week there will be a vote in plenary concerning, I think, the own initiative report from the European Parliament, but also the German presidency on, of the Council 
is planning to adopt, I think, its own conclusion on the new strategy. So this is extremely, extremely important and extremely timely. The second point I would like to make relates to the objective, the scope and the content of this new EU forest strategy. And there we need first, I think, to refer to the European Green Deal, which provides, I think, the main orientations. The Green Deal commits the Commission to prepare this new strategy that covers the whole forest cycle and that promotes, I think, the many services that forests provide. It will build on the EU biodiversity strategy, which had been adopted by the Commission, strategy for 2030. And the new EU forest strategy will set the policy framework for forest and forestry to contribute to the European Green Deal. And that will quote, I think, the communication from the Commission in a balanced and coherent manner. And as such, it will have as objectives the effective and sustainable afforestation and reforestation. It will also cover the, the need for forest preservation and restoration, and this in order to help the EU to reach climate neutrality, healthy environment, improving the resilience of forests, and promoting the circular bioeconomy in full respect of the principle favorable to biodiversity. And in this endeavor, and we have already heard that, I think, this morning, the concept of forest multifunctionality will be absolutely crucial in finding the right balance between carbon storage, the supply of raw material, biodiversity conservation, and also the provision of all the other services that forests provide. And this will require mobilization of innovation, knowledge, technical expertise, technical capacity, but also, and this is one of the purpose of the forest strategy, strong coordination at regional level, national level, and EU level. Forests, as you all know, are subject to threats as never before in recent times. And we talked, we heard this morning talking about, you know, uh, pests, forest fire, drought, the impact of uh, climate change. And we need, I think, to address all this. It's absolutely fundamental. Currently, to quote a few figures, some 4 million hectares of forests in the EU are currently damaged, and about half a million hectares are burnt every year. So it is important that the member states and the Commission consider the best option to face this threat and help to improve the resilience of our forest. Also a word, I think, concerning the circular bioeconomy. It is important that in order to feed the circular bioeconomy, the management of our forest has to ensure the sustainable supply of wood and biomaterial and substitute product. And I will give here an example related to construction in order to make it, you know, a long-term important carbon storage option. I would like to mention here, I think, the, and quote, I think, the, the president of the commission, Mrs. von der Leyen, which in a recent address on the State of the Union, and mentioned that our building generate 40% of greenhouse gas emission, I think, of the whole EU. But we know that the construction sector can be turned from a carbon source into a carbon sink if organic building materials like wood are used and if smart technologies like artificial intelligence are applied. So in order to deliver all, all these fronts, because I talk about multifunctionality, yes, there are a lot of different objectives, I think, to, to achieve. We will have to continue working together with the member states and relying on their commitment to implement a more ambitious agenda and strategy for forests. And there we think that it is important to continue and to reinforce our coordination efforts with national forest policy and also towards harmonization of national forest information. At the same time, the new forest strategy will have also to respond to demand to reinforce its international dimension. And it is important to maintain, and I would say to show leadership for the EU in promoting and implementing sustainable forestry and to ensure that EU decision and policy do not harm forests and the environment abroad. In addition, I would like to mention in this brief introduction that uh, I would like to underline the need to enhance also the communication uh, with the wider public. Society should be better informed of the many, of the many benefits that forests can provide to all of us. And in this regard, I think we should pay particular attention to the gap in perception between 
rural areas and uh, urban areas about the role of forest. Finally, just a few words, because um, I heard this morning, I think the need to rely on robust data and evidence in order to underpin, I think, this uh, forest strategy. I would like to mention that this is highly needed in order, to, in order to ensure, I think, the relevance, the robustness, but also the acceptability of this future uh, EU forest strategy. And there, I would like to mention that the Commission will build on the already existing body of evidence that exists, I think, on EU forests, on the status of forests, and on the needs. And I would like to mention a few of them. You already talked about the report from 2018 on the progress in implementing the current forest strategy. I would like also to mention the interim evaluation of the biodiversity strategy by 2020 and all the additional evidence that have been collected in the preparation of the uh, biodiversity strategy for 2030. I would like also to mention the report from the member states under the Nature Directive, the report from the European, um, uh, European um, Environment Agency, I think, on forest. And of course, we will give, I think, you know, um, but due importance to the own initiative report from the European Parliament and also to the conclusion from the, from the Council. So this forest strategy will also be prepared, I think, on the basis of uh, what I would call a broad consultative process with public consultation, with discussion in different committees, the Standing Forestry Committee, the Civil Dialogue Group, the Coordination Group on Biodiversity and Nature, etc., etc. So it will be a collective effort. And in this respect, I would like to say, and this will be my last point, that the preparation of the strategy is a joint effort of all relevant Directorate General in the, uh, in the Commission. And this work is co-led by three Directorate General, DG Clima, DG Environment, represented here with my friend Umberto Delgado, and of course, I think DG Agri, but all relevant services, we're talking about research, or we could talk about you know, energy, all the relevant services who have a say or who have a specific aspect related related to forestry will be associated to the preparation of the future EU forest strategy. And this hopefully will enable us, I think, to adopt this future forest strategy by the end of the first quarter of 2021, so a quite a tight deadline ahead of us. And this strategy will be, I think, one of the key contribution of the EU to the next UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, so the COP26, if I'm not mistaken, in Glasgow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, stay put. You get some questions shortly. And we'll give the word over to you, Umberto. Right. Okay, thank you very much. And first, uh, Anna, uh, Pierre, and uh, the organizers, thank you for this, this chance. I say exactly as Pierre, it's a pleasure to also have a chance to see people and read body languages around us, something that we have been short of. And also to be very pleased uh, speaking after Pierre Bascou, because I can fully endorse everything he said, as you could expect. So let me just try to give some focus from environmental lenses looking into the topic. The first point, well, that was referred before, the situation of you forests is far from good. We have uh, heard about the droughts, the pests, the forest fires, the climate impacts in general, also these reports on sharp increase in harvesting since 2015. But if you look at it also from the angle of nature conservation, the results are not good. We know it from reports by DEA, including the report, the State of Nature report of this year. We have around only 22% of forest habitats in good shape. So, of course, the problem is there, which is not finger pointing to anyone, it's just from we must depart into what we want to do with our forests. I think the second issue is reflecting what does the EU Green Deal mean in, wide, uh, in wider perspective and for forests in particular. Uh, in my view, it means a political response to a growing public concern and perception of some let's say, global problems around there that also impact in Europe and in our livelihoods. First and foremost, climate change, but also the second big global, global problem that is very well underpinned by science as climate change, that has potentially catastrophic consequences as climate change, and for which we have some win-win solutions, as in climate change, which is biodiversity loss. And the, the Green Deal does put some focus on these two angles. If you read again the Green Deal in the first four sentences, you find climate, forests, biodiversity altogether. So that's one of the signs. Uh, and indeed what the 
Green Deal uh, commits the Commission to is to help increase the quality and quantity of European forests, to reach climate neutrality and to help get uh, a healthy environment. And for this, with the goals of restoring degraded forests, increasing uh, carbon sinks and promoting a circular bioeconomy. So, in my view, the Green Deal does cover the whole forest cycle and all the multifunctionality and several values of the of the uh, of the forests and forest sector so what he also said the green deal was that building on the biodiversity strategy that would follow a eu forest strategy and i think some stakeholders have seen this some some loss of autonomy of the forest strategy or some engulfing of forests into biodiversity only not at all what it just says is that of course the forest strategy will be autonomous but it will have to be coherent with the climate goals, climate targets, the biodiversity strategy, and so on. The biodiversity strategy is out there. It, uh, what it says on forests is, um, is more detailed there, na namely that we will define, monitor, uh, map, and strictly protect the remaining old growth and primary forests in, in Europe. We will increase the quantity, quality, and resilience of forests. And that's why we will have a forest strategy coming, building on actions and commitments of the biodiversity strategy, but in, in, in line with what the Green Deal aims to achieve, uh, including afforestation, reforestation, tree planting, this pledge to reach at least 3 billion extra trees in the EU uh, with uh, biodiversity friendly criteria, with good potential for greening cities, for agroforestry, agro for landscape features. It also refers to this convenience of having more management plans of forests, first and foremost in public forests, but also in private forests. It announces in parallel with the forest strategy that there will be guidelines coming for biodiversity friendly afforestation, reforestation and closer to nature forestry. And finally, it also refers to an important point that Pierre has referred to, this, this need for to more uh, knowledge and monitoring. So this forest information system for Europe will de be developed, including within the forest strategy, at uh, this one shop where everyone can get uh, in, in, in clear uh, and updated information on um, European forests. Um, now, on the, on the forest strategy, I won't say now what we, it will contain. Pierre already said it. Within the Commission, we are uh, co-leading between DG Agri, DG Environment, DG Clima, which reflects, let's say, these um, values that society is expecting from forests, which cover all the, from the circular bioeconomy to climate and biodiversity. And of course, on balance, uh, it needs to be balanced. We should not forget that each of us has a different center of gravity to measure balance. So I actually think I said to Pierre, in the end, if no one will be pleased with the forest strategy, I think then it will be balanced probably. So we will strive towards that. But what we should look at it is, what do we want the forest strategy? In my view, and I heard that in the very beginning introduction, um, forest is a long-term issue. So we should think what we want for European forests, let's say in 100 years, where do we want to get? If the forest strategy highlights us on this, I think it would be very good and it should guide us towards healthy and resilient forests um, so that the management decisions taken now can help us go in that direction. Um, another thing is of course, there's no rewriting of or rediscovering or reinventing the wheel on what is or not sustainable forest management. But of course, sustainable forest management can also be implemented in practice to deliver better on these harsh uh, challenges that forests uh, are facing nowadays. Um, an important point I already referred, and I think we should keep this in mind, which is actually policy making reflects or should reflect what wider society wants. And there are indeed new values coming in if you take into account uh, polls of public opinion, the Eurobarometer, etc. So this balance, I think, should indeed uh, reply to the issue of preservation of biodiversity, which is dear in the heart of many Europeans, 
to the climate challenges and the role that forests can take for it and forest products, and to the economy and the bio-based circular bioeconomy that depends on forests and on, and on material provisions in a sustainable way. One thing very clear is if we are moving to wider climate targets of reducing greenhouse gas emissions from 40% to 55% until 2030, the carbon sink effect will become more important. And this includes, of course, the potential of forests to absorb carbon, the potential of forest soil to absorb carbon, and of course, the potential of wood as a replacement material, as also highlighted uh, by Pierre. All this will be, I think, uh, crucially important uh, in, in the topic. Uh, a key word I call your attention to is restoration. Restoration is becoming, the, we will have the UN decade of restoration coming in, which it brings this positive message on um, biodiversity policy. It's not just, oh, we are losing, we are losing, we can put it back. So restoration, including of the graded forests, I think, can do a lot for us as it's something I would, I think we should do more or pay more attention within the forest strategy. Now, some things we should do less also, and the biodiversity strategy points the finger to the convenience of doing a bit less of using trees for bioenergy. It's not the best use for trees uh, normally in terms of um, what we want from, from the climate, not necessarily the most sustainable way to address biodiversity climate and indeed the economy. While other things we should do more. For instance, looking for further income sources for forest owners to complement the income they have now from wood and timber, which is the easiest one. So we are very much open to look into how can the approach of paying ecosystem services be transformed in economic flows in practice and not just be a diffuse uh, concept. Uh, it is indeed, we don't forget for a moment how important forests are for the providing economic opportunities to rural communities in particular. So I think, uh, it will be very obviously be of everyone's interest, Pierre also said it, to have not only wide communication and awareness, but in, indeed to establish a very open and in-depth dialogue around the forest strategy and that would entail. And uh, my best advice for those that make their living with forests and are foresters and deal with forestry is make more and more these new values that society is requesting from forests your own own the forest strategy, the biodiversity strategy, the climate strategy will have, and I think we will be better served up to 2030. I would stay here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to both of you for very well-prepared interventions and very sort of uh, full of information, very juicy. That makes it a bit easier here as a moderator. So there's still a couple of things I think we need to, to sort of dig a bit deeper in. And the first one, and you're not going to be surprised, it's the status of this uh, revised strategy. Because you both mentioned to be built on. Um, in the biodiversity strategy, it says to be in line with climate and environmental objectives. But now you're using the term to be built on. And for me, if you build a house, then you're very dependent on the foundation that you build it on. So what does this actually mean in plain English? Will it be a standalone policy on the same sort of policy level as uh, policies on climate change and biodiversity and bioeconomy, or is there going to be an interdependence? Who wants? To, I'll let you go first on that one. On that one. Building on the biodiversity strategy, there will be a forest strategy, which is, I think, are the words of the Green Deal. For me, means something very clear, which is they will need to be coherent. Actually. All the policies we do in the Commission should be fully coherent. And now what, what I read here is not any uh, subsuming a forest as a minor issue that just uh, delivers for biodiversity, but that it will have to be done, taking into account and developing what the biodiversity strategy says on forests, as it will have to take up what the bioeconomy strategy says on forests, uh, how it will have to take up, what climate strategies and goals and targets say on forests and expect to form forests. Mm. So I don't think really the word building so should be So are we too here. picky when we pick on that word? Are we too I sensitive? I think so. There, there, there's more of pickiness. I'll come to that, I suspect, mm. on other questions. 
Do you, do you, anything to add or disagree? No. I don't expect the commission to disagree on stage, but I can always try. <laughs> exactly. No, no, we, we have about, you know, boxing gloves, you know, <laughs> No, no, no. I've, uh, just to say that I would like to echo uh, what Umberto was mentioned. I think you know, when we talk about uh, building upon, I think you know is basically to ensure I think, full consistency and full coherence between what we are doing. And it relates, I think, to the biodiversity strategy. It relates, I think, to the uh, new climate policy, new energy policy. I think the future CAP, etc. I think forests are very different aspects. And we we heard that I think this morning already at uh, uh, in different instances. So it is important that these different aspects are, you know, put forward and are, you know, uh, elaborated in full coherence with, I think, the policy framework, you know, uh, all the strategies which have been defined for each of these aspects. But as uh, Umberto uh, mentioned, I think, in my view, I think there's no issue of ranking one above the other or underneath or, uh, no, no, I think it's uh, consistency, I think, is a key word there. Okay. Well, I think that, that is probably as far as I will get the two gentlemen on that topic today. <laughs> uh, so we'll go to another topic instead. And... Um, uh, I will start by making a claim, and I don't make it on behalf of myself, I make it on behalf of the forest-based sector. So we claim that you have a tricky task ahead of you in achieving a strong policy document that can really encompass all those contributions to EU objectives that, that the forest-based sector contributes with, sort of making it embracing, at the same time respecting the member state competence on forests. So. Open up a bit. How do you think on this? And we'll start with you this time, Pierre. Is this a challenge or is it an easy PC that you sort out on a Wednesday afternoon? And I would prefer Thursday afternoon, if you don't mind. No, um, no frankly, I think it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge. It's clear. And, uh, but in my view, I think we have some good experience from the last uh, two forest strategy. Because at the end of the day, what is a strategy? Is setting you know, a long-term you know, vision about a sector, about a field. And it is about you know, coordinating and, I would say, ensuring consistency between what is done at regional, national, and EU level. And, uh, and for this, I think, we, uh, in our view, I think we see mainly added value, I think, to this, uh, to this document and this strategy. Because as we said before, we have a multifunctional you know, uh, sector and uh, natural resource, I think, forest, with climate, uh, environment, uh, social, economic, uh, energy angles, etc. And what is important for us is, is to ensure that I think we, we put forward a long-term vision covering all these different aspects in a coordinated manner, you know, and looking at all the different policy at EU level, but also at national level. It is also important for us to have this strategy because we need also to, to streamline and to, to mobilize better, I think, all the financial sources that can be used in order to, to support, I think, the, uh, the achievement of this, uh, this policy. It's also important, I think, to have this, uh, this strategy because it's, it is important and we see today, I think, there are very different types or on a virtual basis, having very different types of, uh, of stakeholders around the forest. So I think to bring everybody on board, I think, is absolutely uh, critical. And this strategy allows, in our view, and we, we have seen that for the last basically 22 years, I think allows, I think, to mobilize, to, uh, to commit, I think, all this, uh, all this engagement and to translate, I think, you know, all this expectation in into, I think, you know, a long-term vision. So it's a, it's a challenging task. It is also sometimes, as uh, Umberto has already said, I think, you know, there are sometimes some, uh, some uh, sensitive issues. I think we talk about biodiversity, we talk about, I think, you know, the level of subsidiarity, and we heard that also already this morning. Mm -hmm. But um, we have some experience, I think, in the forest, uh, in the forest field, and uh, so far, I think, the, the two preceding uh, forest strategies have proved to be, uh, to be very effective. So uh, we intend, I think, to build on that, mm. build on it, and, uh, and achieve, you know, uh, in, even increase added value because the expectation and the, um, what will be required, I think, from the forest and from the forestry sector at large will be even, uh, even higher in the future. Mm. Well, thank you. Uh, we both know that there has, there has been and there is an ongoing political discussion on EU competence uh, on environmental topics relating to forests and forestry. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on this? So how far does that EU competence on the environment, how far should it be allowed to sort of go into the member state competence on forests? To be There's very a honest, lot of, of people course. who are very interested on this answer no, no, now. I, 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 to be actually, uh, when I refer to pickiness, I was uh, having this in mind, as you could expect, 
because to be very honest, I think uh, I, I respect the discussion, but I think it's a no-brainer to be honest, because no one is saying that in the treaty there's reference to forests or forestry, but it's very clear in the treaty there's reference to some policies where, the, where there is EU, EU competence, such as environment to begin with, climate, uh, rural development, or disaster risk reduction, and they are all linked with forests. So it depends of the angle of the policy. There's, for me, a very obvious shared competence. Why would we be thinking of for EU forest strategies if the EU had nothing to do with forests? That would be intergovernmental. The member states would do whatever they want on their own agreement. So for me, this is rather obvious. And to be honest also, I think, uh, and this maybe can be helpful or constructive, uh, reactions I've seen on Green Deal versus forests, biodiversity strategy versus forests, seems to me to come from, by one side, a fear of interference or of loss of competence or of invading my territory. And I don't think that's at all the right uh, approach to get balance or to reply to this new request that society is requiring from forests. So uh, I think we should not fear the Green Deal, nor the biodiversity strategy, nor the forest strategy, and should aim to, to, full, uh, to full harmony there, as harmony between the contents, the subsidiarity and the shared contents that apply in this case, as it applies in, uh, in uh, biodiversity, in agriculture, on managing the borders, on so many other issues. I feel it for me it's... Mm. Quite a no-brainer, to be honest. But you have a couple of times now, you have referred to uh, what, the poly, what the public wants. Mm -hmm. uh, just remind you that the forest owners and the forest managers are also part of that public. Absolutely. Uh, so it has to be the sort of uh, joint uh, understanding of what the public means. But let me react, because uh, Pierre made a very important point, which is we need to address this divide that sometimes seems to come out on... Um, urban citizens versus rural citizens. Mm -hmm. If you think about wolf expansion, the feelings are different. If you think of forests, they are also different. I see a worrying trend. Mm -hmm. Polls of the use, where a majority thinks we should never cut a tree. I think that's very worrying. So of course, I, of course we know forest owners and foresters are European citizens, but it's of their interest to also mm -hmm. manage to um, raise the communication and the understanding of those that are more far away from the fact and can build on some fantasies, maybe. Mm. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, I'll take the liberty of moving on to another topic. Um, and surprise, surprise, it's sustainable forest management. Because I know from my own experience that forest owners and forest managers, they struggle on a daily basis uh, to manage their forest sustainably, balancing all three of those pillars. Huh? So I think one way of uh, winning their hearts is if the revised strategy makes a really clear positive stand. We see the good work you're doing. We want this policy document to sort of be help you improve even further. Can we expect that? Or is it going to be a bit more of a language? You're not doing this good enough. You need to do this differently. I'll go with you first, Pierre. OK, thank you. No, the I think the concept of sustainable forest management, I think, is, uh, is very important. It's quite widespread and, and, and widely used in the, um, in the EU. It's well defined with criteria, indicators, etc. And it's quite widely also um, recognized at international level. Uh, Paris Agreement on Climate Change, Convention on Biodiversity, etc. So, in our view, I think this concept of sustainable forest management, I think, should be one of the central elements, I think, of this uh, of the future uh, forest strategy. But it's clear that it is also a concept which is flexible that can be adapted, and it is clear that with um, forest, you know, forest owners and uh, people working in the forestry sector, have done, I think, very well. But there are some issues. There are some difficulties now. We talk. Uh, we heard this morning. We talked about pests. We talked about, you know, climate change. Uh, we talk about the development of the bioeconomy uh, bio sector. So we need um, forest owners and foresters, I think, will have to address, I think, all these new challenges. Some of them will be easy. Some of us, you know, are much more, much more difficult. So for this, we will need to adapt, I think, this concept of sustainable forest management, I think, to these new challenges. But it is clear that for us, what is, in, uh, what is important is that this, uh, this concept as you said, I think strike the, I think the right balance, I think, between the different aspects of economic, environmental, and, and social. So we see it, I think, as one of the central themes, I think, of the future uh, forest strategy. So once the pub strategy is published, if I put it in the hands of uh, one of Europe's largest uh, 
uh, private forest owners? Do you think he or she, when reading it, would feel, yeah, this is a boost to my activities that I do on a daily basis? Is, do you have that mindset when you work in the commission on this strategy? Yes. We don't, do, we don't define, I think, strategy for us <laughs> in Brussels. I think we define strategies, I think, for the, uh, for the EU society and for people work, uh, working in this field. And what we want to, what we are working on, I think, with Umberto and uh, other colleagues in DigiClema and other colleagues in Commission Services, is to define, I think, this vision and to put flesh, I think, around this vision. This vision, which, of course, will be, uh, is, uh, is influenced, I think, by what has been already put on the table, the Green Deal, the biodiversity uh, strategy, I think the climate targets, the, uh, the future CAP, etc. But it's, it's putting flesh, I think, around, I think, this, this vision. And what we hope is that this strategy will help, you know, to uh, present, I think, a, a long-term strategy, I think, and, and a long-term orientation for the sector, which is, by definition, I think, you know, a sector that needs, you know, long-term investment and that needs to be able to project itself, you know, over 50 years or 100 years. And this is what we expect. Yeah. Um, concerning the strategy, because you mentioned yourself the long-term perspectives we have in forests, 60, 80, 100 years. But the other policy areas that this one needs to be built on have considerably shorter time. Uh, frames. Uh, we're talking about a 2030 climate target, we're talking about 2030 biodiversity objectives. So you're going to play with two completely different time scales. How do you intend to manage that? It's actually the same time scale, I would say, in the sense that if you think biodiversity, that's in even longer periods. It could come to millions of years that we don't really manage as humans. So when you have targets, or you have usually a long-term vision to 2050, you find that for climate, you find that for biodiversity, and then we have these milestones for 2030 to ensure that we are going towards that vision. So I think on the climate, on the uh, timing side, uh, there's no contradiction whatsoever. Uh, if I can add to that mm -hmm. just one word on sustainable forest management or what a, a forest owner may expect from the forest strategy. First, uh, I, I've, since I am DG Environment, I've understood even better than before how important recognition is yes. for farmers, for fishermen, for hunters, for forest owners. That do a lot of good job. Mm. Does it mean in this sector everything is rosy? No, it, it doesn't mean that. And actually, you must understand that when we look to science, what's the main driver of biodiversity loss ahead of all the, of all the rest? Land use change and sea use change. So, of course, all those that deal with land and sea can expect something needs to be different, which doesn't mean you're the, to blame, you're the one doing it wrong. But it may mean that we must, in the nice things we are doing, we may need to do something different. If a strategy would come out with just the expectation, here's a medal to, to use in my chest because everything is fine, that would be politically empty. I expect some new, uh, new trends, some new orientations, including to reorient where sustainable forest management would go. But I would not expect it to be a threat to any forest owner. So as I said in the beginning, I hope no one will be fully pleased from the environmentalist to the, the industry, but recognizing, well, this is balanced in the end, some consensus building. But building on that, building on what you've said about, you know, communication, engagement, the Standing Forestry Committee has been very important according to the forest-based value chain's opinion. Uh, as that forum for discussions between member states and the Commission. Uh, can we expect that the Standing Forestry Committee will be that main body also going forward? Because at the same time, you at DG Environment have kicked off a couple of processes on, for instance, closer to nature forestry, which is very relevant also in the term of, of a revised forestry strategy. So where are we on this? Well, that's very simple. <laughs> you can expect, of course, the Standing Forest Committee to remain as important as it is for all forestry-related issues. You can also expect the Standing Forest Committee not to be the single body that can be involved, consulted, or help develop po policies. To give an example, we do have a working group under the Coordination Group for Biodiversity in Nature, dealing with these issues, the guidelines for uh, closer to nature forestry or biodiversity friendly afforestation and reforestation, where members of the Standing Forest Committee also have a seat or can have a seat, depending on what member states uh, have appointed. The issue is this group has more than forestry representatives. It also has environmental representatives. So this group, 
other uh, groups that also exist, like the core group, I don't know the exact name, Pierre will know better, they will all need to be consulted and involved with no diminishing role at all of the Standing Forest Committee. It's just not a standalone. Okay. And you are completely on, on speaking terms about this in the Commission? Because the Standing Forestry Committee is under DG Agri. The Standing Forestry Committee is co-chaired by DG Environment and, uh, and DG Agri. My mistake. And the Standing Forestry Committee, I think, is a central committee to address, I think, forestry issue. But as Umberto mentioned, I think there's a lot of different aspects that need to be, you know, uh, I would say, I think, you know, uh, looked at, you know, more in depth. And this is why we have these working groups and the other different types of groups that look at specific aspects. So, mm -hmm. yes, no... Um, so no you mentioned, views. both of you, in your interventions that the forest-based sector contributes in many ways to the Green Deal objectives. Uh, but if we focus on one of those contributions, namely the climate change mitigation, can we expect that the revised strategy will have strong language on all three S's, meaning sequestration, storage and material substitution? Can we expect that language? Who wants to go first? Yes, I will start. Yes, I think we will have uh, we will have languages because this is a critical aspect that we will have to uh, we will have to cover in this uh, in this strategy. But at the same time, I think we we need to be clear: um, the forest strategy is a strategy. It's not, you know, legally binding. It's not, I think, you know, um, a legal proposal from the Commission. So we need to uh, distinguish the two. So in the forest strategy, yes, I think we will provide, you know, long-term orientation. But what we expect, I think, for the, from the forest sector and from forest, and we will refer, I think, to the different elements, you know, you talked about regarding climate mitigation. Uh, but there will be more precise elements uh, regarding this climate mitigation that will be, uh, that will be covered in the future, um, I would say, legal framework governing, I think, all the climate legislation. And I guess uh, Arthur, I think, will, uh, will mention that maybe, I think, mm. you know, in the next session. But it's, uh, we have adopted uh, a legal proposal and a communication recently, two, um, yeah, two weeks ago, concerning, I think, the new um, climate ambition for the EU by um, 2030. This is an overall ambition with a communication. In this communication, the, the, com the Commission has announced a revision of the climate and energy framework within which I think the LULUCF, Land Use, Land Use Change in Forestry, uh, will be looked at and there will be new proposal regarding forestry, the forestry part, in uh, it's June 2021. So there you will have much more detail, of course, concerning the legal framework, what is expected from forestry, with an impact assessment, etc. But the forestry, forestry strategy, of course, will be consistent with that, but will provide only, again, I think a vision, a long-term, you know, long-term orientation. But, but the thing that I'm really looking for here is that uh, in climate change mitigation in EU policy, there is a very strong focus on energy substitution. And I'm not surprised, 72%, I think it is, of all uh, fossil emission comes from the generation or the use of energy. But if we're going to achieve that climate neutral society by 2050, we will have to transform also the materials that we use. And so far, according to my knowledge, there is no policy document who is taking, you know, a stand for the importance of substitution also of materials. And I say the revised policy strategy could be the first place, could be the place for it. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I w no, no, I agree that, well, overall, climate mitigation and climate adaptation would certainly show up in the forest strategy more stringently than before. That's one of the issues to cover us from the Green Deal. Within that, on the angle of uh, mitigation, I'm sure the carbon sink effect will deserve more and more attention, including on the forests as such, on the trees as such, but also and very particularly on the soil, where most of it stays for longer, we under proper management. And I also expect exactly what you said, which is this, uh, this material replacement of what comes from fossil fuels and wood provides an excellent uh, material for that effect, especially if we put it to uses where the CO2 stands for long, like this table. It can stay here for 100 years uh, with a bit of luck. Of course, other uses of wood, like the, for energy, if you just use the wood uh, to burn, you put it back into the atmosphere quickly. And yes, we know it can return from uh, three rows, but we do have a time gap. 
Because as we said, this is a, a long-standing issue, forests. And they take from a couple of decades to 80 decades or more, depending on the trees. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that time to wait for climate. That's why the biodiversity strategy does put uh, some angle on that. But it, this issue of, um, of w w replacement materials will, be, will stand there. And I add another key word that I hope uh, that I think we will we'll find there, which is this international angle on forests, like the need for us to make sure that our, uh, the products we use in the EU and our approaches are not promoting uh, deforestation or forest degradation elsewhere. All this I would expect to find in the strategy. Thank you. When can we expect the consultation to come? Very soon. Very soon. soon. The next few days or weeks. Oh, that was good. Um, I'd like now to turn over to Mr. Lennart Axel because we're going to hear what's been buzzing on Twitter while we've been discussing here. So has there been any interesting discussions going on? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, we have had a flow of, of uh, tweets coming in from participants. Uh, they are generally very positive and they are uh, very encouraging actually. They are stressing the, the use of the forest. Uh, Jessica Pulfia, she, she wrote the, that we have to look into the possibilities with, with the forests. Um, we are talking about circular bioeconomy, multifunctionalities coming up. Uh, there are quotes uh, that the forest, stand, the forest strategy should stand on its own. And another one from Danica Du Rosa, it calls the foresters to own the forest strategy. And... Um, the need for, for long term, 100 years was mentioned by, in, in a tweet. Uh, there were no specific questions, but uh, lots of, of positive um, comments, and I do encourage you to continue to tweet on the hashtag Green Source. Thank you. Well, thank you, Leonard. Then I'll round off here on stage with a bit more of a personal question. So, how often do you get the opportunity to visit a forest? Every Sunday with kids. Um, That's a good habit. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, it's, um, yes. Um, my relation to forests, I have to say, is, uh, is uh, unfortunately limited, I think, to this, um, what can I say, recreational, you know, uh, aspect, I think, of the, uh, of the forest and professional, of course. But um, on a personal basis, uh, I'm coming from the south, uh, the south of France, in an area which is covered of vineyard, and uh, where unfortunately most of the forest had been cut centuries ago in order to build, I think, the uh, um, the fleet, I think, for the French, the boat, I think, for the French navy, and so now we have mainly vineyard, and I discovered, I really discovered, I think, forest uh, in the Ardennes, I think, in Belgium, but also in Sweden. I did, I did go several nice times well. to Sweden, but my main. Um, my main visit to forests are mainly recreational, I have to say. And you, Umberto, how often do you get the time to get out? Uh, well, actually quite often, you know, I was thinking while Pierre wa was speaking, I'm from Portugal, but I think some of us are born kind of liking nature, that was uh, what happened to me. So be it on the sea and on forests uh, and on land, I've always had a tendency to go there and I think I even have, have exaggerated on bringing my kids too much into forests, they are forest lovers. They didn't have kind. a chance yeah. to object. So, but let me just add, uh, I was never involved on forest management or nothing like that, but during my lifetime, I did see some unsustainable practice and some, I say, mismanagement, abandonment that is now feeding the huge forest fires we have in Portugal mm -hmm. once in a while. And I do think that forest yeah. restoration, forest fire prevention and nature conservation are coming together as a single policy more if we want to solve the problem. Well, with that, I say thank you to both of you. And uh, at this point, you may leave your islands <laughs> and return thank to your you. seats. Thank you. And now we would like to interact a bit with you in the audience and those of you looking at our broadcasting. So it's time to get your device out. It's time to get active on menti.com. And there it comes. So, uh, I assume the question has been out already uh, for a while and people have responded. So we made a statement. So we stated that the forest-based sector contributes in many ways to EU objectives and that the post-2020 strategy will be essential in maximizing this. So the vote is sort of a sign of how strong you as an audience think that this can be as a policy tool. 
And I think it's quite encouraging both for Pierre and Umberto to see that there's a lot of belief in this policy document that you are now preparing. Uh, because uh, five means that they strongly agree that this will be a strong policy tool, while, why, why, while one means strongly disagrees. So there's a lot of faith in you on that, which is good. And now, Jessica, it is time for you to come back on stage to talk a bit with me. <laughs> so you listen to some interesting discussions, interventions, statements. Um, if you were to, to try to define your three main takeaways, what would they be? The three things that stand out. Oh, um, yeah, it's been a very interesting discussion and it's been interesting to hear what uh, Gigi ha had said and put forward. Um, there are a few things that I would like to stress and uh, I, I mean, the all over document, the Green Deal has been um, used a lot and I think that is what I started by saying, uh, it's a good thing that we can keep this in mind and that we can keep on discussing and they are coming uh, to the parliament. So I, I think uh, it's a good ambition and uh, from that ambition uh, there are like forest strategies and so coming out and I think that is important to keep in mind. Um, one thing that I also reflected upon was that uh, it was a lot of um, a lot of, uh, but uh, the society was mentioned. Mm. And I think that is also important because the society and forestry is uh, one another's friend and it's not a uh, bubble. Uh, there is in, it's integrated in each other and also um, I think Umberto mentioned that it's a, it's a demand from society, from forestry products and, uh, and that is the responsibility that is taken for granted maybe, but we know that uh, there are people who had to manage the forests and, and to, to provide what mm -hmm. uh, good it can bring to, to the rest of society. Uh, I think that is an important point of view. You said three things? Uh, that was two. That was two. <laughs> uh, what but we I can heard, stay with two. <laughs> no, I think that uh, I also uh, was glad that it was mentioned and that was the sustainable management of the forest. Uh, it is important, and we know that there are families, there are uh, enterprises that, that have to be careful what, uh, but you also said it's a long-term plan, so what we decide today will be crucial for 100 years, and uh, what we can harvest uh, in 100 years uh, will be decided today. So I think that also is good to have the long-term uh, uh, sight, but also be uh, here, uh, be <laughs> that it's important what we make decisions today and how we manage the forests. Uh, and of course, the, the climate change, uh, the ambitions that we have together, and we are discussing the climate law right now, and we know mm -hmm. that an energy efficiency will, will be a crucial role, and uh, and how the forest still will, will play a, a very important role in these matters. And uh, I also heard <laughs> European forests, and I think that is a common used uh, word, but I think there will be more than one dimension on the forests in Europe, and we know that there are differences. Of course, there are similarities and challenges as well that we share, but uh, I think in, in general that we have to keep in mind that there are differences in how uh, the forest management is uh, used and the traditions uh, around it. Okay, so I heard you say that you, you enjoyed the way that it was framed versus the European Green Deal, the overall objectives, uh, the link to society, meaning include you know, all parts of society, and also the importance of sustainable forest management. Mm. Respecting that forests are not one type, they are very much different around Europe. Mm. Was there any surprises to you from what was said here on stage. Any big things that we should have? <sighs> no, but uh, <laughs> I think that the, the new black from the commission is uh, that no one will be satisfied. It's a good document. <laughs> I heard it when they presented, presented the, the migration uh, uh, from the commissioner Ilva Johansson the other day as well. So uh, we will we will wait and see, but uh, I think so the big all... takeaway, no one is going to be happy. <laughs> I mean, it's the same in the parliament. While the negotiating the, the, this uh, forest strategy, we know that a negotiation is when everyone moves from their starting point 
and no one will be totally satisfied in the end. But uh, yeah, we will wait and see and see what will come out. Interesting. A final question there. Um, how strong a policy document do you think the revised strategy will be? Will it be that one sort of booming the discussion on, on forests and forest-based products in EU policy? Or? Uh, do you want an honest answer? Or no, uh, well, it's your choice. <laughs> a political one. Uh, no, hopefully it will be a document that can uh, give answers and uh, uh, there will be a provision, uh, yeah, it, it, I hope it will provide uh, the answers that they are, are uh, asked for. And of course, I hope it will be a booming product. Well, thank you, Jessica, and thank you for being the host today. We much appreciate it uh, in the network. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has taken us to the end of the first seminar today. Uh, we hope that you have found the discussions engaging. Hopefully you've had one or two aha moments. Th those moments are really good because they make you think. Yeah? Uh, we would very much like to get your spontaneous reactions on this seminar. and You can enter them through menti.com, writing free text. Um, we're going to go for a short break now. We are going to be back by 11 o'clock. So stretch your legs, get a cup of coffee and make sure that you're back either in this room or in front of your screens by 11 o'clock.